How you everyone? How you doing? This is Sharon Combs with Knowledge or Nonsense. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday morning. We're going to jump right into it. Uh, today, our topic is what does support look like? A, I want to thank SIPS Consults and CS Assist for sponsoring these conversations. And you guys can't see me, so I want you to be able to see me as I'm talking. Yes. I want to thank SIPS Consults and CS Assist for sponsoring these conversations. And yeah, let's just jump right in. I know that I had read a little bit over the past few days about some nurses who were not comfortable with the mask. And so they were making some decisions. And you know, last week there was a nurse that was let go because he felt there was some unsafe practices. And so we're gonna talk about support, not just in that area, but support all the way around. What does support look like to you? And so Luane, how about I just start off with you? What does support look like? Sure. So support for me uh, while working within uh, the hospital um, was when senior leadership, they actually uh, emotionally, financially uh, invested in my department. You know, they come down periodically. Uh, I, I know them on a first name basis. And this, this is if I'm just a tech, I don't have to have a C in my name to know other folks that um, are major stakeholders in the facility. Um, so they, they're invested, you know, it, it, it's more, I can that type of support to uh, having a, a distant cousin that's not so distant, you know, they come down and they, they incorporate my team as a part of their everyday rounds. Uh, and they include us in decisions that are impacted by us. So at an SPD, so that support is just that involvement. Okay. okay. I, I definitely agree with, with what Luane said. I, I thought about uh, one time I was at a, a facility doing some consulting and I needed the um, C-suite to understand what the needs were because I'm saying you're paying all this money to bring someone in to consult, uh, but if you aren't giving them what they need, you're going to be back in the same place that you were. With. And I remember getting the, um, the CEO on the CEO's calendar and so she, her administrative assistant said, oh, well, first of all, she said, what is still processing? And then she said, this will probably only take about five minutes, right? And I said, no, I need her for four hours. And <laughs> so it, it took a while before she got on my calendar. They need to understand why. And I said, well, once she gets into the department, she'll understand. She came in and she looked so cute. She had a pearl necklace on and mm -hmm. on and on. I said, oh, no, we're going to want to take that pearl necklace off. And uh, and I put had all the attire for her to put on. I said, we're going to start in Deacon Tam. When she left out of there, when I tell you we had our next meeting, she couldn't say enough about the staff and stir processing. And if it wasn't for stir processing and I had no problem getting uh, what they needed. What, and also the thing was that took the relationship, as Luane said, the staff uh, felt that Someone understood what they did, that the, the C-suite was there for them. And so, yeah, those relationships are very important, that they understand, one, what it is that ster what, what sterile processing does and, and yeah, and, and how, um, how much we're needed than the things that we need to do our jobs. Hmm. Yeah, that's essential. I think that um, we always, it's difficult sometimes because as I've ro risen up and gotten different positions, I've had opportunities to be invited to those meetings and sit at those tables. But it's um, on a tech level, sometimes it's a little bit harder when um, to express that people care about you when you don't see them and not visual every day. And um, if you only see the director, the director or the, you know, your VPs, when it's a problem, that also kind of makes it a little bit difficult too. So I've understood yeah. from every angle because being in a leadership position, you understand you have to build those relationships with people who don't come into your department often, but also um, give them the confidence that everything is running smoothly, but let them know that the department would appreciate that reassurance that we're doing the, the right thing, that we're appreciated, that um, the, the effort that we put into everyday operations is valued. And that comes from those people in the higher positions coming down and taking that moment. And I can say that for our VP right now, um, she does those rounds maybe every um, late, maybe maybe buying like she comes out at least twice a year to walk through the department, talk to people. Then she also has some sit downs where she'll invite certain people to come and give feedback about what's going on. And those happen often. So I can appreciate that just on a level of knowing that someone on that higher up level cares and is interested, invested in what we do. Yeah, that, and that's great. So I wanted to ask that's that's great. The, the rounds. Um, 
Luane, you'd mentioned something that included, um, well, it had a little hint of money. Not saying that that's how they did it, but like things like that. What are like some, what are some other practical ways that people would recognize support? Um, I know sometimes one of the major hospitals out in the California area, hospital systems, they invest in their in their people's like leadership. Like they have a, a budget set aside for people to get up to 40 hours of leadership training. And if they go get some on their own, like they reimburse it. And so like, to me, that's a form of support. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that people could support like maybe ideas when people have an idea within the department that they were like, hey, I think this would have a different result than here. Sure. What would it look like there? Sure. And I, I can, I can, that's a great question, Sharon. Um, I, I've always been a big thinker, you know, I'm the type you come into a room, you think you can change the world, right? <laughs> um, um, it's, it's being, having access to resources and being able to speak truth to power and speaking truth to power like in different forms, mm -hmm. right? Um, you can walk into a hospital and, and this is real, real life experience. Only way we would know who's in charge is by the pictures on the wall, right? So we right. look at the wall and you have a picture of past president, past CFO and current. Um, and you would ask um, a technician who, oh, I never met, I never met that guy. You know, only time I see that guy is when joint commission comes around, right? right. <laughs> um, but to, to answer your question, what does that look like? It's being included in, in decisions, right? Before you buy a new sterilizer, right? That I, as a technician have to operate, um, uh, ask my input, right? Put out a, a, a department survey. What do you guys think about uh, this particular brand? What do you think about the functionality of this brand? Um, uh, it's gonna impact my day-to-day -day livelihood. It's gonna impact how I come to work if I decide to come to work or sh should I exercise that sick call benefit, right? Um, <laughs> should I be an unhappy, a unhappy camper? Um, it's having access to create Multifunctional teams, right? I, I, it's important that SPD uh, has the supportive resource of joining the infection control committee, right. uh, of joining the uh, uh, operational demand committee. These committees that impact my day to day and uh, my efforts impact theirs. Uh, so that support just means uh, it can't be inclusive, right? It has to be uh, a village approach. As we spoke about multiple, multiple, multiple uh, times, and we have to include the smallest people on the totem pole because everyone matters. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Anyone else? I, those are like Luane said. The support, uh, everyone that's involved, whether it's, it's uh, environmental service facilities, that's one of the first things that I recommend as a, uh, especially as a new leader uh, coming into a facility. That within the first couple of weeks, that's something that you incorporate those meetings with the stakeholders, um, because we, as we were saying, you don't want to see people when there's a problem. You already want to have that relationship formed because you want those people to be on your, uh, those different areas to be on your on your team. So when you pass them in the hall 10 times before you ever need them, when you call and say, hey, this is Karen and sterile processing and I'm having a problem with, they're like, okay, Karen, well, you may have been number 30 on the list. Just because you have that relationship, you may jump up to number 10 on the list. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's, that's very important, uh, those relationships. And even with, with your staff as the upline, um, I think it was, I don't know if it was Luane or Lila, but that said, uh, the, Lila, whoever it is that comes in, uh, your upline comes in and speaks to everyone, you know, as the leaders of the department, I, that's another practice. You want to come in and, and go to each one of your staff and say, good morning, good afternoon, you know, how how you doing? Again, because it's really important to know, for the staff to know that they're supported, you know, even if every day it's, I'm okay. You know, but you would know in the tone of their voice, I'm okay because you hear it that way every day. And then one day when they say, then it's like, no, you know, what, what's going on? And that really means a lot because they feel like you're really in tune to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else before I'm going to take a quick little break and um, show a commercial, but did anyone well, else have something yeah. they wanted to say on that? I wanted to um, uh, piggyback off of uh, Karen said. Karen, I always told myself and team 
if I ever had the opportunity to run a hospital, you know, and be that person at the top, I wanted to make sure um, I knew everyone's name from right. the security guard to the beautiful lady in the lunchroom. Right. And the queen. Um, it speaks a lot about the hospital's culture. If you as a leader are uh, in, in a position of power, you don't know who's in your on your team. Mm -hmm. So uh, right. it's time to check yourself. If, if you're so disconnected that you're forgetting about the people that make your life uh, a lot easier. Right. You, know? So. you know what? Let's hold off and let's just dialogue. We're eight minutes in, let's dialogue. Because we have people who listen and they listen at all different hours. So thank you guys so much for listening. Please feel free to share this video. So we're talking about support and we're talking about the C-suite being able to support us as leaders being able to support. What would we say to that person who is like a supervisor, a lead or a brand new manager? Mm -hmm. You know, and they were very excited about stepping into this role. And now that they're in the role, like, what would we say to them as far as them being a support to their team? Real talk, you know, them being a support to their team, but them also being able to communicate where they would need support. Because, you know, sometimes, and I use sometimes lightly, sterile processing can be blamed for something. They didn't give us the right instrument or it wasn't this, it wasn't that. And because we work within that field, we know that that's not always the case. Sometimes it was not even requested. Um, this is an add on. You know, like we know that those things happen. So for that supervisor, that person who's in the middle, mid management, they're not they're not driving decisions yet. They're learning how to stand in this role. What would we say to them for them to be a support to their team, but also for them to know how to how to get yeah, support from the places that they need it? And I'm going to let y'all go. I'm going to fade out of the screen. And let's just really answer that. Let's be a benefit <laughs> to our community right now. That's a, right, that's right a, now, real talk. That's a great, great, that's a great question. So, uh, ladies, you don't mind if I, I jump in here. Um, I envisioned myself when I was a third shift technician, right? I'm on third shift. Um, I got all the leftover stuff. You know, case cards mm -hmm. down the, the hall. Um, my pick tickets. Uh, some of my cases for the next day are prepared, some are not, uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot going on. Um, I, I never used to see the first shift supervisor or manager. Mm -hmm. Every time I would see the leaders from first shift is when we had our, uh, our morning huddle, you know, and you know, I'm third shift, I'm trying to get out of there. I'm, I'm going to stay for 15 minutes, you know, get, 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 grab, maybe I might grab a bagel, get some information and go. So from that perspective, you want to gain the respect of some of your technicians for uh, managers who usually work on first shift. Uh, come work third shift. Come spend some time with me on third shift routinely to understand how that trans shift feed is happening, how, how I'm getting the ball from second shift, how I'm delivering the ball to first shift. Come spend some real time um, with your technicians, um, not just to say happy birthday or <laughs> ball, but come get your hands dirty. Come, come work side by side with me to show me that, or, and I don't want you doing my job. Most ma most managers, not all, most managers are a little shady when it comes to putting some trades together these days because we don't get to do it often. I'm not saying do my job. I'm saying come support me on my shift. Spend some time. Um, but that, that's, that's how support should look, in my opinion, to a technician. Uh, huh. How to gain support upper management Hey, ladies and gentlemen, go introduce yourself. You know, you be bold enough to walk into uh, the OR, you walk into the C-suite with your, your, your PPE on, your uniform, your ID. If you don't have a business card, uh, get yourself a business card, whether your hospital provides one or not, and go introduce yourself. Uh, that's the first way to yeah. connect with those power brokers. Right. Yeah. And go ahead, Lila. Um, I'm sorry. No, it was just that it was very interesting that um, that was the approach. I would look at it from a different perspective. When I took on an education job, I realized that um, a huge chunk of my time is during the day. I don't get to see, I don't really get a lot of time to spend with second shift, maybe a couple hours in between before I leave. And then overnight, phew, it might as well not exist, right? Because I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not vested. And what I had, what I learned was that I needed to start um, putting down some time. I, I called it like, you know, office hours. I would go 
and dedicate an overnight day out, um, you know, twice a month that I would just spend with my overnight team. And whether it was providing an in-service in conjunction with just time, what do you need from me? You know, how can I help this process? Um, what do we need? What do we like in training on this shift? Um, because you hear the grumbles, you know, we all hear the shift wars. We know what it is. You know, everybody wants to blame somebody else for what they don't do. But I felt less connected to that shift. So I, I needed to spend some more dedicated time with them. And I since shifted to a different position um, and got a, a promotion. But um, I hear it now. So that's the interesting part about it. I hear people saying, I haven't seen Lila in a while. And they, but they don't understand that that's, you know, I've changed roles and that it is. But I realized I'm gonna feel like, yeah, I'm gonna have to, um, you know, come in there a couple of days over the summer, um, overnight, just to give them that support because they don't see me. I'm not as visual any longer um, because I'm in a different position. But I understand that people need to see you if, if, to connect okay. to you. They need to know that your your presence is felt, and they felt more supported when I was offering those, you know, my resources and my time when it was convenient for them, and not having them force themselves to kind of be more convenient to me. So. I had to stretch myself and I, I guarantee that leaders who do that a little bit more often, like you said, take the opportunity to come in on, on the third shift or stay later or come in later, whatever. I think you'll get more feedback from your team because they'll feel that you're with them as opposed to just dictating from a different position in different time, you know? Right. I like to just insert right here uh, an identifier. Like I said, I enjoy human behavior and I enjoy helping people recognize thoughts. So here's an indicator for the supervisor or the person right now with these tools that they're sharing, uh, definitely with the one Lila shared, it means that she had to give of her time outside of the normal time. Mm -hmm. And so if anywhere within your structure, when you're hearing that, you're like, shoot, they ain't paying me for those extra hours or something like that. I want to let you know you're coming that that right there is that's not a leadership or even a career ladder mindset. Right. They ain't paying me for those extra hours. That's that's a scarcity mindset. And that's like I'm only going to do the basic. And if you are exporting that, if that's what you're projecting, whether you verbalize it or not, people know that. And your team, the team that you want to engage, they will be compliant but not committed. They will start seeing what's the least amount that I can do. And you'll be like, they don't ever want to do nothing. You may not say it like I just said. You may say, man, those guys really don't engage. But what they're doing is they're following the leader. Right. I want to leave that there and let you think about that. Because when you're in those roles, when you're that supervisor, you're that lead, you're that new manager, you have to think about the story that you want people to tell. Right. Not that you're trying to please people or live for them, but you have to think about what you're building. They're going to follow the leader. Yeah. And and sure, they go the to Moses because they're following. Yes, ma'am. Right. I was going to say that goes from peer to peer, too, as, as uh, supervisors. Uh, we don't realize how important it is for each shift because you hear, well, your shift, their shift, but we're all one department. So yeah. staff need to see that as well, that each supervisor, if you're in a facility where it's a supervisor on each shift, that each supervisor, you get together and you may not always agree with one another, but you come out of that office and you're, you're one. And another thing, if you're, if you're in a position as a supervisor and you say, they said to the staff, where uh, there was a meeting and upper management implemented a new process and you come out and you say, they said, check yourself because you are there. And if you're yeah. saying that you're still isolating yourself and not taking responsibility of, of the role as a leader. Which in turn undermines the very process you're trying to get your team to engage in. Okay. And so these are just some real, these are tips. Listen, we we know you take the chl you take the cr uh, a few weeks back luana said something like there's plenty of people who have a license to drive in new york but they can't drive mm -hmm. so the initials don't mean you know all of that and sometimes mm -hmm. when you're new to leadership you're like well i have this position and i have this people have to have time to see you operating in said position they have to know that you know, they, they have right. to get to know a little bit about you. And you're right, right Karen. I love that you said that. Lila alluded to it too with the, uh, she called them shift wars. And when you're doing that behavior, just on the behavior part, you're doing the exact same thing that frustrates you when the OR does it to you. Right. So you're like, well, this is what I do. <laughs> but this is what I do on my shift. This is what I do for my team members on my shift. This uh -huh. is what I do on the overnight. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is, this is what I do. They don't, I don't know what they're doing over there, but right. you're a team. We're a team on the whole. And so this we're talking about what support looks like today. We're not going to go into any commercials. But for those of you who are in the field, already, already this session has been chock full 
of real-time nuggets that you can use that will alleviate the frustrations of yourself and your team. You're going to have enough things that you have to, enough buzzer beaters you have to do already in the day with add-on cases, with something missing, with, you know, needing a quick turnaround on something. So these these things right here, these these are things that don't have to be forced, unforced errors, so to speak. Mm-hmm. It's a forced term. Yes, sir. And Sharon, you know, one, one, one motto or credo that I, you know, once I got into my first leadership role many years ago as a uh, lead worker was to model the way, right? Mm-hmm. Period. You want your team to do, uh, to, to work in a certain energy, a uh, certain level of professionalism. You work in a certain level of professionalism right. and energy. You have to model the way. Um, I remember reading a story years ago about a, the former, maybe two formers now, JetBlue uh, CEO. You would routinely see this guy in some of the major airport hubs like Atlanta or LA and baggage claim uh, grabbing bags. But this guy is on top of the food chain right the very top working in an area that uh never gets that publicity right so mm-hmm. i t- share that story to tell you and you can google the term model the way they got a whole um a series of, of dialogue around it um uh, a book called the leadership challenge which is an, an amazing tool for these up and coming managers and, and leaders model the way you know right. show your team your constituency what a leader looks like how a leader performs, and they'll follow. No, I, I definitely agree with that. I, I, I recall being in tough situations where um, staff were calling out, and when I was like new into a, you know, going to different facilities, and I'm new there, and especially facilities where there are strong personalities with unions. <laughs> And so the guests try to test me. I'm like, okay, well, so and so, I'm probably fastest in Deacon Tam, so I'm gonna go back to Deacon Tam, and I'm gonna push this out. And you, and it's funny because they would gradually come in. The people that said they couldn't make it, their car, my car stalling, and this was nothing. Then they're calling. No, she's back in Deacon Tam because they don't let them see you sweat. I put that in my book. Never let them see you sweat. And it's mm. the truth. I didn't have time to worry about. Uh, oh my God, they aren't here. Like you said, I needed to get out there because we had patients that were there, and no right. And it's, mm-hmm. it's always worked itself out because you have to show as a leader that you're willing to roll up your sleeves. You have to show as a leader that when you're saying this is important, it's just as important. You're demonstrating it's just as important to you. And staff usually they're looking in the you know maybe hiding back there trying to see, but they'll eventually uh, gain that gain your respect. And the thing is, I've had a lot of them say, "Why well, don't I let you down?" I say, "No, no, no, it's not about me." But that's how they felt because I was out there lead the troop. You know, so anyway, it, it, no, it, I'm sorry, no, they, it, 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 it's real, right? Yeah, yeah. I have, I have uh, quite a number of friends in those C suite or executive positions, and you know, <laughs> when it gets real for them in self processing, when those phone calls are hitting their hospital phone at 2 a.m., mm-hmm. it, it becomes a norm, and they'll tell you, Wayne, I can't sleep, you know, I, I no longer sleep. And it begins to impact their daily livelihood. So to prevent those 2 a.m. phone calls, um, one, train your replacement, right? Second, these good leaders model the way and get your team behind you. Um, sterilization fail, we're loyalists. We're loyal, we're loyal to a fault. Um, but mm. a leader will follow you to the, the edge of the world, you know, if you're a flat earther or circle the world with you, if you, <laughs> if you truly care yeah. and you got our back. If not, we'll make sure to put you on the front line without a vet. <laughs> I agree. I think the, the most valuable thing you said is just that I've always respected my leaders, my management that um, could show me they could do what they asking me to do. You know, mm-hmm. it's just a difference. It's different when you sit up there telling people what they need to push out of Deacon Tam or when you've gone back there and I've seen you in Deacon Tam pushing out carts, yeah. dragging, bringing down the instruments from the OR, whether it was pushing in the load to the sterilizer and, and helping with the pro, with the product, productivity of the day, like helping us get things done. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes you need to see that, especially when you're coming in a situation where things are stressful. You know, I mean, I, I see it now as we're ramping back up. You know, we've been lax for a while. 
we, we've had what, 12 cases a day on some days that's unheard of in my facility. We're like a hundred day, hundred cases strong. So, um, and we're talking about like, so what that looks like now and getting ramped back up means the, the productivity is going to be expected to increase. So we don't have the opportunity to sit there for four hours on the tray. I need you to pump those trays out and get them done. I need you back into your original conditioning, right? Got back. Remember your drills, that whole remember conversation. Your drills. <laughs> and, but I know that, um, the staff is going to be impressed with the with the supervisor that's saying, "Okay, I understand that we're being asked to do more, but I'm right here with you." Right. You know, how do I help? How do I help you? If I got to go back and decontain, I don't have a problem with it. You know, I'm I'm gonna go back there and put some time in. I'm gonna cover the break or cover whatever needs to happen. I'm gonna go pull them carts that because we have a um you know the elevator mm-hmm. situation now where you know there's a there's some backlog back there and we got to pull everything down. Eight cases just ended at one time, and so we have eight case carts on their way down. How can I help and assist? Jump in it and help your people because they need it. And, um, you know, and it may be a situation when you say, like, I can't take that call right now. I can't sit on this conference call to talk about the same thing we've been talking about for three weeks. I need to go in there and assist my team. This is the stuff like within our field. You know, I know SIPS does mentoring. I know CS Assist has like not only just mentoring, but like they have you know, processes in place to help you with the mentoring. I know, Lila, that you mentor people and you you invest in mentors even. But this is the real because sometimes you get a promotion because you know how to do the technical part of the job. But the part where you you don't know how to say no to a meeting that you can get an update on mm-hmm. so that you can say yes to helping, you know, take care of some of the 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 carts that have been you know helping to make sure things flow the way they're supposed to flow and when you do that like your team is like yeah that's support because that's what we're talking about today that's support and so a lot of times when people are in those roles when i first started um working in this field and seeing people that were like consultants or some interim managers and things like that i wrongfully made an assumption that because they were an interim manager that they had that title that positional title Mm-hmm. They knew, hey, go help your team. Mm. Hey, uh, model the way. You know what I'm saying? Reflect what you want to see. I, I, and it was my, it was my immaturity to assume that. And so there are sometimes people who have a position, but no one's ever really showed them or demonstrated. Hey, let me show you what this looks like in real life. Let me show you how to do this when, um, when you're frustrated because you know good and well. They've been talking over there and prepping packs. They're not working at all. They they they've had four breaks in two hours already. <laughs> you know, and you know somebody else is over there working, working like they have two hours to do six hours worth of work. And mm-hmm. so, as a supervisor, when you're in a meeting place, you have to be able to drive that without it coming out in your attitude or without your body doing mm-hmm. movements. Or without you, without you using words that just indicate, man, you ain't Jack, you know, you ain't, you know, because we have that. And so, yeah, those are some of the things I'm going to do a quick little brand thing. No, I'm not even going to do that. That's the hot seat question today. Somebody said they so needed this. Listen, it's real out here. Go ahead. I was going to say, you want to celebrate. You want to celebrate your team on days that you know that they struggled. You know, come out there and, you know, good job. You know, we we did it today. Those right. little pat on the backs. Um, and, and then ask your upline, what what do we have that I can, we can give the team to celebrate periodically, whether that's ice cream day, pizza day, and thank you cards go a long way. I used to keep thank you cards in my in my drawer. Mm-hmm. And I would give individual thank you cards. But I mean, people know when you're sincere. So don't just pass out thank you cards, but the thank you card where that person came in on their off day um, to help with whatever, the ones that stayed over and, and you know that they they went above and beyond. Give them a thank you card. I still have thank you cards that someone gave me years ago. It, it means a lot. It, mm-hmm. it, go, it, goes, it goes so, so far, so far. You know, and as a leader in the NSB, speaking from a place of, of, of experience, um, you want your manager to come lighten your load. It's like, don't pretend, don't, 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 put, listen, I don't know how many NBA coaches are on the sideline that didn't play ball, right? If you didn't play ball in the NBA, you, you, you suck as a coach. I don't, <laughs> if you didn't play ball, um, I take the same sense with SPD. If you didn't work in this department, 
If you have no experience putting together a tray, feeling that humidity and decontamination, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, if your if your arms if your arms are not the size of my thighs from pulling those case cards, uh, <laughs> in the wrong place. Um, but as leaders in this field, we need to lighten the load from our team. We know what they're experiencing, and and we know what they signed up for. I'm not saying you know um, lighten the load that they can't earn their way. They're earning their way by showing up, right? Mm -hmm. These are a special group of people, and the, the reason you know they're special, I always get a smile on my face when I'm touring a country, and you meet that technician who they have 25 years in. That's mind boggling. You have 25 years in doing this rigid, toiling. Um, rewarding but stressful role 25 years plus or 10 years plus that says a lot about yeah. the mental tenacity of someone and the consistency of someone who can stay in that that place support the same people um uh and you wonder why folks don't need counties lila right they've been doing it for 25 <laughs> years you know it, you can't uh, a piece of lint won't make it in that trade because they, they know it so well. So support your folks, leaders. Make sure your job is not only to lead a model way, but lighten the load for your team. Take off some of the burden. Um, um, say thank you, right? If, if part of your orientation has to include, when you see someone in the hallway, uh, say hello, you need to check your organization. These are some of the basic right. rules of engagement. I, you shouldn't have to train me, Sharon, to say good morning. Uh, uh, or hello, you know, mm -hmm. I learned, I, right, good morning. I learned that, you know, uh, in preschool, but <laughs> yeah, we model the way. We, we we have a job to do to support our team. Go ahead, Lila, look like you got a, you, you want to bring something to the floor. No, that was just awesome because I, I, people need to hear that. And, and coming from um, a place where, you know, I had a privilege of working underneath you as a manager before years ago um you were my manager and i was a technician and i and i definitely can say i always saw the team they were the supervisors to the management like that was i always saw them they were out there on the floor they were in they came back and checked on us in decontam they were up there helping us with cases they were back there making sure loads were being done and so that's a strong you know strong leaders have that presence and uh, you don't question who's in leadership when you come now if you're sitting around wondering who the supervisor is and this that's is right. your first day it's it's no it's, it's, Look, it's you might want to go in and go out and leave one out because it's not worth your time. You can't, yeah. you can't figure out who your leadership is within your first moments in the in the place. Um, no one should be able to come into your department and um, question it, even from people who are just coming in and fix a fix a light bulb. They should be able to visually see that people are concerned, making sure mm -hmm. that you have put up the, pr the proper icker barriers or whatever's going on and ensuring that you have the right PPE and everything else. I'm always impressed when my team stops somebody at the door. They're like, Right. Excuse me, what you doing here? What's right. going on? We're in a restricted area. So, and and that comes from leadership. That comes from being empowered to do your job well. And um, and that comes from yeah, it comes from your team. Like your leaders have to be such have such a presence that make you feel comfortable to do your job well every day. But also have the same time they give you when you when they see that things are struggling and they just mm -hmm. not looking at the fire from back there talking about well let's call the fire department. No, they're right there going with the extinguisher trying to put it out. And that's the kind of leadership that I want. And that's what I'm looking for. Right. And, and you know, that saying, that old saying, it's uh, it's lonely at the top, um, you know, because I, I started out as a, as a technician. And so I had I've had lots of years to see things that I felt worked well and that didn't work well. And so as we climb up, you know, we don't forget uh, what we were saying about being out there and staff seeing you. It doesn't matter, you know, whether I was a, a supervisor, a technician, supervisor, uh, manager, director, uh, consultant. At each level, it's that human factor that that people appreciate. And like what we keep saying about going out there, um, I would get to the point where I'd say, "What can I help with?" Uh, by going in your office and doing your job, so we were okay. You you helped enough yesterday, you know. And I'd laugh. I know I can help some today. Go in the office and do your job, Karen. We have this, you know. But but still, uh, just people knowing that you do care about where they are. And I used to always say when I'd go to new facilities and they'd say, well, you don't understand. You don't understand. So I'm like, come here, let me talk to you. I started out as a technician, you know, and their eyes would get this big. So yeah, I understand your battle. Help me. And so I say that to new leaders um, that came up. Never forget where you were and that human interaction with, yeah, yes, I understand. And so together, together, let's do this. And when you say I have your back and they're asking about getting additional things 
what we were saying as far as their upline, you know, make sure that you follow through, that you come through for your staff. And if the upline says no, you don't just stop at that. I'm just letting, that's what you tell the upline. I'm letting you know, if we don't get these brushes, that we're going to have bio burden coming out in our lumens. Um, you keep saying, why are we having this problem? This is why. I need your help. So supervisors, I say your shoulders are strong, have to be stronger than anyone else's because the front line depends on you. Then you have your manager that's pushing you out there saying, do it, do it, do it. And you have to be able to communicate to them in order for me to do my job. I need your help with, with you doing your job to give me these resources I need. And right. say, go ahead, Sam, I'm sorry. No, okay. Final question right along those lines. Guys, thank you so much for just being here on Knowledge and Nonsense and sharing these tools. Final way for us to add value today on this segment is for the new manager or for the supervisor who is actually the manager. I do want to say this, guys. Title doesn't always indicate uh, just responsibility. There are plenty of leads that are running the entire department. So you may be in a surgery center, you may be in a large community hospital. And so just because you have the title director or you have the title manager and you're in a surgery center, that doesn't mean that you can do those same things at a large community hospital that's like Lida said, we're pushing out 100 cases a day and you're used to well, I have two people and then we have a really good understanding. Like, so things are different based on title. I bring that back to ask this question. How can we add value to the new manager who is so used to being out on the floor and so used to doing the work hmm. with the hands? What are some tips we can give them on things that they can focus on in the office, other areas? Because you said you have to be able to communicate. Listen, this is we're going to continue to have bio burden because of this. You know, we, we have some wire brushes over here. You're going to have a high repair bill because you're using the wrong materials. So for that new manager, what is the way that we can add value to them with things that they can do that don't, that does not have to do with actual staff engagement, but has to do with more of the administrative side, the planning side, the scheduling side, the budgeting side. Okay. Okay. So, so th this quote comes to mind. Sorry for being corny, but um, William Shakespeare said this, right? He says, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and others have greatness thrust upon them. Mm -hmm. So those three variables mean, AKA, get yourself a mentor, right? <laughs> a mentor a mentor will be able to uh, explain to your current stage of greatness, will be able to show you how to achieve other, uh, other heightened levels of, of greater skill set, so you can be able to pass that knowledge back on to someone else. So right. mentor, you have four looking right at you. We'll do the screen right now. Contact us. Um, we will leverage every possible resource mm -hmm. from CSS or from SIPS Consults to get you where you need to go. Get yourself a mentor. Absolutely. I agree with that, Luang. That means that 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 goes a long way. And it, it's, it's, it's rewarding to be able to give back. And so I, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have uh, mentors in my life. So yeah, I, I agree with Luang humbly. Absolutely. Only thing I would add is just that um, be an expert in your craft and know your resources. You know, if you haven't been, if, if you weren't given a, a copy of your standards and what you follow and guidelines of your institution, whether it's Amy, SGNA, whatever you're looking at, um, know that that is that's not your playbook, and you need to use mm -hmm. that every day. That's going to give you what you need, the language that you need to be able to speak to the people for the things that you may need to help you manage in this situation. And of course, a mentor. I, my mentors are awesome. I I, I, I I lay my burdens down on them sometimes when I'm frustrated, but also um, I come to them with a hey, I just need I need a quick idea. I send mm -hmm. them a text message. Can you help me get through this? Because I'm ready going to a meeting. And I need to know what what's the best solution is for this problem. As um, but I use that, and then people come to me with things. You know, send me policies and procedures or things like that, or ask me some insight on how to get around some um interesting topics with staff. And and I'm helpful because I give it, and I give it back. I don't you know I don't ask for anything for it. I give it back, especially when I know people are trying. And that's all I can ask you to do is just that once you get to a point where you have more to give, start giving it back to. Them. Oh, touche. I love it. Thanks so much. Um, even today, I know today is May 16th and uh, during the COVID, I know COVID's not over, but at, during COVID, when it was first hitting and just the onslaught, I know that SIPs actually, 
not only did they have like this non-automated helpline where facilities could just call and get help, you know, hey, what is asking about the mask and we're doing this with gowns and this and that. And so not only did they give back in that way, it was like no strings attached, just give us a call. We're going to navigate through this. But they also sponsored free leadership training. They uh, you know, they they hired they hired my company to do this free leadership training for whoever signed up. Like that was it. All you had to do was sign up. And they're like, no, we'll help you navigate it. And so we actually start that today. And and we talk about the mentors and things. So, you know, that's part of giving back. That's part of giving back. I'm glad to be a part of that. And that's one of those things where Lila, you were like, it's easier to follow somebody who does. Like it's easy to come on here and say, you know, you want to give back and such and such. But I just going over the past 90 days, I can say, okay, no, these are things that happened where SIFs are long before we got into this discussion about support. Who knew it would go this way? Right. Well, are giving back and they're not giving back like, hey, look at what we did. No, I'm going to sing the praises. And these are ways that you give back. And so look for those things, man. When you see those things and you see opportunities or you know that you need to invest to grow, invest to grow. Take those opportunities. Don't let your conversation be full of, man, I should have done this. Maybe I would have had this because you would get things like the language. You would find out where Luane said, invest in a mentor. What should I be doing? I'm so used to doing everything hands on. Now they keep pushing me back in the office. What? How do I how do I drive this ship? I'm used to working the ship. How do I drive the ship? And so to make those transitions. So thanks so much, Sips. Thanks so much, CS Assist. Lila, dynamic educator. Thank you so much. I don't know if I ever introduced everybody on the line, but we have Karen Cherry, owner of Sips Consults, worked her way up through the ranks, a business owner in different areas. Lewayne Perkins, president of CS Assist. Uh, quality solutions, quality education, quality information, everything quality with CS Assist, Lila Price, dynamic educator, educating not just system wide, but now educating nationwide by coming on here and sharing her wisdom. And then yeah, my name is just Sharon, and I'm glad to be here. <laughs> so, uh, everyone, have a great weekend. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank mask you. up and remember your drills. Outside, mask up. Inside, SPD, remember your drills. That's right. right. Keep moving. All right, everyone. Thank you Take so care, much. Everyone. Bye. Bye.